Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. We'll use the plot line for this story. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So the first portion just introduces time, the aspect of time and place while Jesus was in one of the towns. Uh, that's the only detail Luke provides for the story. Matthew will tell us that this happened after the Sermon on the Mount. Mark tells us that he is, um, I think, outside of one of the towns. Um, so this seems to be some different ways of these guys describing where Jesus was at the time of this uh, for different reasons. But Luke is more interested in the miracle itself than in where it happened. So while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. Now we've got the subject of this miracle, a man, and he's covered with leprosy. This word lets us know that it's not just a little leprosy, not just one spot, but that this guy from head to toe, he is covered with leprosy. So. That's how this starts. We'll go to our plot line, 12a. A man is covered in leprosy. All right. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So another indicator right here, he's seems to be waiting for Jesus. I doubt that he uh, just comes across Jesus. Uh, lepers were not allowed to be in places where there were other people. So this leper appears to be seeking Jesus out. He's looking for Jesus. He finds Jesus. He falls with his face to the ground and he begs the Lord, Lord, if you are willing, then, you know, that's an if then statement, then you can make me clean. If you are willing, then... You can make me clean. All right. So let's go back over here. Oops. 12B. The leper asks Jesus to heal him. I am going to talk a little bit about the story in Mark, even though it's not here in the text in Luke. Mark adds a really important point. He says that Jesus is indignant at the question. And remember that indignant means that you're kind of righteously angry at somebody else. So why would Jesus be upset with this statement? There's two parts to it. The first one is, if you are willing, you can make me clean. The second one is, you can make me clean. Uh, so where is the doubt? If you were to ask the question... Where is the doubt in the leper's mind for us to understand this? I uh, hope you see here and I'll just go, uh, I'll just highlight it. But the doubt is in the first session, the first part of the question, if, right? This is the part he's not sure about. He's certain that Jesus can heal him. He's not sure if Jesus is willing to heal him, which would explain the indignation that we see in the book of Mark. Uh, Jesus was offended that the leper was unsure if Jesus would love him enough to, to heal him. Maybe he would ask to be healed and Jesus would just turn him down. Um, so there's a, a little point in there. Now that's not pertinent to the story of Luke, but I, but I do want us to just know that just in case you ever are comparing it to Mark. Now let's go to verse 13. Jesus reaches out his hand and does the unthinkable and touch the man. Not just reaching out. You could just reach out and not touch, but Jesus touches the man and the reason that this is important is that touching lepers was unthinkable it would make you unclean it was just completely gross they were disgusting everybody hated them and again you know what what's the significance of this i think personally it's very much related to jesus's willingness he's like let me show you how willing i am let me show you how much i love you i'm gonna touch the leper right and then Jesus says, I am willing, he said, be clean. So this touching of the man demonstrates Jesus's willingness. And so we see a lot about Jesus in this, that he 
desires to love the unlovable. Something for us to keep in mind. All right, we'll go back to our plot line. And uh, he, sorry, the leper asked Jesus to heal him. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this a little bit up. We have plenty of space. So I'm going to just move this about halfway up. And we'll hit um, here at the top. We'll go to uh, 13a. Jesus loves and heals the leper and touches him. That's the unthinkable part. All right? This is the proof of Jesus' willingness to heal. It's the high point of the first part of this story. And immediately, the leprosy left him. Uh, once again, you get an, a picture of Jesus' authority. I'll just highlight this in pink. Jesus commands, be clean, and the leprosy leaves him, right? Um, we could, you could never look at a sick person and say, be healed, but Jesus can because he has that level of authority, right? And immediately, the leprosy leaves him. So this first section is healing the leper. Now we go on to the second part. Jesus ordered him. Don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer sacrifices that Moses commanded you for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Super cool little piece right here. So let's just jump into it then. So another marker for time. Just moving that story right along. Jesus ordered him. So here's the command. Don't tell anyone. Go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. So this command has got a couple parts. Don't tell anyone, go, show, offer. Four commands to this guy, okay? Uh, that Moses commanded for your cleansing. So that's the, that's the first thing that we see here, right? As the, as the action falls, uh, let me see here real quick. So we can just erase the A, just 13, verse 13 up here, verse 13. But now verse 14A, Jesus gives four commands to the leper. And I'll go beneath the line over here. One, uh, now I forgot, let's go right back. Don't tell anyone, go show offer. So here we go. One, don't tell. Two, go, three, show, four, um, offer, sacrifices. Okay, so that's four. Uh, that's, that's how Jesus wants this man to respond. The, the man who commands leprosy and it obeys is now commanding the leper. Let's see if the leper obeys. Oh, sorry, one other piece uh, before we go into that. As a testimony to them. So all of this up here, all of this up here has a double purpose. Not only is it to show this leper that he loves him and, you know, in so doing the unlovable everywhere that he, Jesus loves him, but also all of this serves as a testimony to them. Okay. All of these things are a testimony to them. And we might ask, who is them? And the answer, of course, is right here, the priests, right? The priests in Jerusalem. Jesus is letting them know, hey, the Messiah is here. He can heal lepers, right? So this is an actual uh, testimony to the, um, to the people in Jerusalem. Of course, they, they ignore it, right? So uh, kind of as the action begins to come up here, this is 14b. Um, the leper is a testimony to the priesthood okay that's what's supposed to happen here all right let's go back to the story yet yet and that first word is like a you know but just going in the opera opposite direction yet the news about him spread all the more so what happens as a result 
crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. So uh, this is another climax, but not in a good way, in, in kind of a bad way right here in 15a. Uh, Mark tells us, by the way, that the leper didn't keep quiet. He went and told everybody. So that's how the word gets out is the leper disobeys. So the sad part here is the leper disobeys and Jesus is overwhelmed by the crowds. So it actually ends up being a hindrance to Jesus in his ministry. And it's a testimony, not to the priesthood, but to the wrong people. It's a really interesting story because it starts out so wonderfully. And then the second kind of climax is, is, is lower. And I mean, I guess, you know, I didn't think about this until just now, but we could, you could even reverse it so that maybe the plot line would look something like this and then like this. It's more of a descending action than an ascending action. I'll keep that in mind for the future. But um, it, it's just kind of a disappointing way for this story to turn out. The leper doesn't listen. Jesus is so overwhelmed by the crowds that he's got to go. But Jesus brings his own resolution to this, uh, this situation in his own way. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed, right? And so what's happening here is uh, that, uh, sorry, oh, let me sorry, let me focus on one thing at a time. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed, right? He's getting away from the crowds of people. He's withdrawing from the crowds of people to lonely places, which sounds sad, but he's not going there to be alone by himself. He's going there to pray, to be with his heavenly father. And so even though the situation doesn't turn out the way that Jesus wanted it to or intended for it to go, he still does what's right by getting away from the crowds and getting alone to be with the Father and praying. So kind of the falling action of this one, which is verse 16, uh, shows us that Jesus uh, still seeks to be with his Father. So super cool. Jesus does the right thing. The leper, we understand why he would tell people, but he still doesn't do what Jesus told him to do. It makes Jesus' ministry a little bit more difficult. Nevertheless, Jesus makes the best of it by seeking to be with the Father. So kind of two lessons that we get here. In this first one, you know, Jesus touches the leper, the unclean one. And instead of him becoming unclean, uh, the leper is cleansed, right? So it teaches us a lot about Jesus's cleansing power, the salvation he's going to bring. He's going to touch sinners without becoming sinful. He's going to make us sinless. The second story uh, lesson over here comes with kind of this leper who disobeys Jesus. And nevertheless, Jesus maintains right relationship with God, the Father, whoops, with God, the Father, in uh, poor circumstances is the word that we'll use there. Poor circumstances. Ones that the um, leper maybe unintentionally subjected him to. So we see min Jesus' ministry beginning to uh, explode. What's really interesting is that in Mark, Matthew, and in Luke, this is one of the first miracles that all three record. And it really shows that this event right here is something that was stuck in the mind of everyone as that critical moment where Jesus really explodes on the scene and his fame really gets going and uh, the crowds begin to follow and all these things. It all happens with this cleansing of a leper. Um, and to understand that, you could always go to study Leviticus 13 and 14 and they'll show you just how much lepers were hated and disdained and ostracized by these people. It's why this uh, miracle is just so tremendous. So there you have it. That's um, Luke chapter 5 verses uh, 12 through 16.